The task that we are going to undertake in this lesson is to create a pivot table. This is fairly easy to do once we know what type of final output we would like to obtain. In front of you is the database that contains all of the information that we want to include in our report. These are various transactions that a firm registered. We can see detailed information about each of the transactions. Year, store type, product group, producer company, code, volume, cost of the product, and revenue for the product. We already know what to do when creating a pivot table, right? We have to select the entire table, click on the Insert tab, and then select Pivot Table. The dialog box that appears shows us that we are about to create a pivot table for the cells that we have selected, which is exactly what we want to do. We can select whether to insert the pivot table into our existing sheet or into a new worksheet. Let's leave the settings as we see them and create the pivot table in a new sheet. I'll click OK. This is where we will create our pivot table. On the right side of the screen, we have all the pivot table fields. Each of the fields corresponds to the data that we have in one of the columns of our database. In order to create a report, we need to drag and drop these fields into the four areas below. Let's say that we would like to create the following report. Amount of volume sold by each type of store in each of the years that we have in our table. We need to include three parameters, volume, type of store, or simply type, and year. I'll drag the type field in the rows area because I would like for each of the rows of the table to show information for a specific type of store. Then I'll drag the year field in the columns area as we need to see a split for each of the periods that are contained in the database. And finally, I'll add the volume field within the values area, as these are the values that we would like to observe. There is one slight complication, though. Right now, our table does not display the volumes that were sold in each store, but rather it counts the number of cells in which there is a value for volumes. In order to change that, we need to click on the parameter and select Value Field Settings. Here, we can choose the type of calculation that will be carried out when Excel summarizes our data into a pivot table. We have to select Sum. All right, let's click OK. The pivot table should be fine now. It displays the volume that was sold in each of the types of stores throughout the periods that are contained in the database. This was very easy and efficient, right? In our next lesson, we'll focus on formatting pivot tables and enhancing their appearance. Thanks for watching.